Good morning. A number of years ago, I kind of stumbled into a practice I often use now when I am helping people, when I'm about to pray for people. I decided to start asking people before I prayed for them, what is it that you want me to pray for? And I sometimes make it kind of a joke and say, I know this is ridiculous for me to ask this question, but uh, when I pray for you, what do you want me to pray for? And I've discovered that's a powerful question because rather than me assuming that I know what it is that someone really, really needs or really, really wants, it can help both me and them to clarify, no, this is what I need from God. I have frequently had times where I was visiting someone in the hospital and they were very, very ill and they will say, not pray for me so much, but but pray for my spouse. Pray that my husband will, will be okay because I know how much he's worried about me right now and he's working so hard to take care of me or pray for my children. Uh, I have sometimes asked that question and a person has kind of broken down into tears because it just uh, became aware, apparent to them that God really does care about what they want or what they need and they really can't ask. And sometimes I think we just need to be given permission to say, well, this is what I think I really need. Our lectionary passage from the day comes from Matthew 20, and I want you to see this passage uh, from the Lumo version, but see if you can see in here uh, where Jesus kind of does this same thing, making sure that someone knows exactly what it is uh, that they want. Uh, here it is, Matthew 20. As Jesus and his disciples were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. Two blind men were sitting by the roadside, and when they heard that Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet, but they shouted all the louder, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. Lord, they answered, we want our sight. Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Immediately they received their sight and followed him. There's so much in that passage, but I really do want to focus on Jesus asking these two blind beggars, what do you want? Now their lives were very, very difficult. Uh, it's never actually easy to be a beggar, and I know oftentimes uh, we accuse, and sometimes rightfully so, uh, folk of uh, being more willing to beg than they are to work. Uh, but uh, uh, for these two blind guys, they had absolutely no choice. And they had to debase themselves every day and just throw themselves onto the, the mercy of strangers and hope that the kindness of strangers uh, would allow them to have enough money to eat on and to, to take care of their other basic needs. Uh, and it couldn't have been easy. And it always was hard. And both of them would probably gladly have practiced a trade for money if they could, but there was nothing for a blind person to do in that day and age. And so all they can do is beg. Jesus comes along. Uh, they obviously have heard of him. Maybe they know that he is a miracle worker. Uh, so they holler out for help. Uh, the crowd kind of tries to make them uh, stop and be quiet, but they holler out all the more. And you wonder, what were they hoping for? Maybe initially they were simply hoping that Jesus would tell the crowd, take care of them, feed them, uh, give them um, some money, you know, be, be, be nicer to them. Uh, but instead, Jesus comes over to them and he asks that question, what do you want me to do for you? And for the first time in a long time, they're actually able to voice their true need, what they truly want. Sir, we want to be able to see. And Jesus heals them and they can see again. Of course, no one else could have done that for them. It was only Jesus who could have done that, but they recognize we're now in the presence of Jesus and so we can ask for this. But then what is so powerful to me about this passage is it ends uh, rather abruptly 
but nevertheless powerfully when, when it says they followed him from that day on. They became followers of Jesus. And in a sense, they gave up one rather difficult life for another difficult life. Just in the passage before, James and John's mother comes to Jesus and says, here's what I want, Jesus. I want my sons to be on your left and your right. And, and Jesus says to her and to them, uh, you can't have that. That's not going to be something for you. And he says, can you drink from the cup that I'm going to drink from? And they say, oh, yes, of course we can. And he says, well, you don't really know what you're asking for, but you are going to drink uh, from that cup. Your life is going to be harder than you think it is because you're a follower of mine. Uh, and yet you are a follower of mine. How powerful, important that is going to be. And he gives that, that wonderful injunction about that, that the greatest among you is the least. The one that serves is, is the greatest. And so these two beggars who their whole lives have had to been, uh, have to, having had to been served by others now are able to serve others and they follow Jesus. And so when we dare to say to Jesus, this is what I truly want. We have to recognize he is likely going to give us what we want, and that is wonderful, uh, but also he is going to bring with that the, the condition that we follow him, uh, that we use whatever it is that he gives to us uh, for him and for his kingdom. And so I ask you this day, what is it that when you pray for yourself, you want to pray for? And then I'd encourage you to pray for that. And so I will try to now offer a prayer in that vein. Uh, let us pray together. Lord, we come before you with many needs, with many wants and desires, and so now we lay them before you. And we trust that either like the blind beggars or like James and John, you have an answer for us. And your answer is that you will be there for us and that you are calling us to follow you and that you will provide for us. That answer may be no, I'm not gonna give you what you want and yet I still need for you to follow me and we promise to do that. Your answer may be yes, I'm gonna give you what you want and now how can you take what I've given to you and use it for me? I'm serving you. How can I, you use that to serve others and serving me and serving others? And so we pray that we'll be able to do that. And we pray these things in your name, knowing that you are with us and we thank you for that. Amen. Indeed, God is with us. 